the longest serving heir apparent in British history, is taking his first steps out of the long shadow of his mother's 70 year reign. Mark Phillips assesses the challenges and the promise of the reign of King Charles III. In 1949, Elizabeth proudly presented Prince Charlie to the world. From the moment of his birth, there was little mystery as to what life held in store for the then infant prince, now King Charles III. He was the first baby born to a British heir presumptive in a thousand years. This tiny, sneezing prince stands next in line of succession after his mother. That sneeze may have been one of the few things in Charles's life that was unplanned. He was always meant to have an orderly procession to where he finds himself now. Even if it all took rather a long time, until this. Three cheers for His Majesty the King! Hip hip! Hooray! Hip hip! Hooray! Hip hip! Hooray! Charles had what's been called the longest internship in history. In taking up these responsibilities, I shall strive to follow the inspiring example I have been set. I think he's going to be the best prepared king this country's ever had. After all, he was heir to the throne for longer than anyone else. But Robert Hardman's latest time. book on the royals is Queen of Our Times. I mean, the idea that you can be an apprentice in your 70s might seem a bit odd in any other job, but I mean, the fact is he has been preparing for this for a very long time. Charles III. But insofar as British monarchs have any real power, Charles arrives with a severe handicap. He follows a very successful holder of the job, his mother. Everyone's been talking about how she is going to be a hard act to follow. Is she an impossible act to follow? In some ways, I think she is, because she became so affectionately familiar for the vast majority of Britons, both somehow mystically distant and um, touchy-feely would not be the right word to use about the Queen, but warm, essentially warm right. and sympathetic. And Charles, says historian Sir Simon Sharma, has had trouble with the sympathetic thing. The kind of received wisdom about Charles, as he very endearingly says, he's sometimes seen as an eccentric, really. Mm. He's too wrapped up in the passionate principles in which he believes to have this touch for, the, for ordinary people. The Queen's early and frequent use of the crowd walkabout was one way she had of bringing her closer to the people. Well, the apprentice seems to have learned from the master. Charles's first act on returning to London was to work the rope line. He got out of the car and, you know, and, and was very warmly received. Turns out he's a natural, although it's doubtful this ever happened to his mother. I think he got Les Majesté a kiss, a kiss from someone. Well, actually, she said, Can is I it all right you? if I kiss yes. you? And he didn't hesitate. No, you actually can't imagine the Queen not it. hesitating. Mm. So that is a good start, I think. Is there a kind, though, of magical royal fairy dust that, uh, that descends at times like this? Yeah, you know, it's a thousand years of fairy dust. But Charles has another problem. Unlike his mother, people know what he thinks. On modern architecture, he hates it. On global warming, where he was well ahead of the curve. We cannot be anything less uh, than courageous and revolutionary in our approach to tackling climate change you might say, the fundamental problem of our moment of the 21st century is the fate of the Earth. And there, he's been asked that for like 30, 40 years. Had the Queen not lived as long as she did, Charles might have had another problem, Diana. But the ill-starred marriage and the tragic death now seem like a long time ago. Camilla is now Queen Consort, a title to which the Queen had given her blessing. New kings mean new beginnings, even between the two sons of the marriage who had publicly fallen out after allegations that Prince Harry's American wife, Meghan, experienced racism at the palace and the couple moved to California. Yet there were the two princes, together with their wives, greeting the thousands who had gathered outside Windsor Castle. Their grandmother's death and words of reconciliation from the new king seemed to have done what many hoped, brought the feuding sons together. I want also to express my love
for Harry and Meghan as they continue to build their lives overseas. This was definitely a kind of outreach to reassemble the family in all its complications. Charles will be a king with a different personality and a different style, but some things will likely never change. What about the royal trappings? Could we stand a little less of that, perhaps? Each culture needs its dressing up. Why the hell not?